Welcome everyone to the Holstein House Podcast. I'm the West Virginia woman, Robin of RobinHolstein.com and Holstein House, where my guests get a great night's sleep at a fair rate plus breakfast. This is a podcast that looks at society and culture issues affecting families in West Virginia and the United States, from food preparation and storage, gardening, home repairs, current events, and more. We'll go around the table and back in 60 minutes or less. So let's hang out and talk a while. Good Tuesday morning, all y'all. I hate to do it to you again, but I kind of warned you the other day um, that I'd have to do some pre-recorded episodes, and today's one of them. Uh, The next couple of Tuesdays um, are going to be pre-recorded. Let me make sure my dates. This is the 12th, 19th. Oh, the 27th may not be. I think she's, I think. Yeah, the 27th probably won't be, but next week will be again as well. Um, And then uh, one, let's see, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think next Tuesday's the last one. I have to go, I have to check this schedule um, for our um, extension agent who's doing the program at the church. So uh, hopefully it'll just be one more and uh, it can, I don't know if it really goes smoother or not uh, when it's pre-recorded. Oh, I've got my red light kind of high. Let me turn that down. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got that uh, allergy stuff happening again. It's always fun, isn't it? Change of seasons. We got the first, of, uh, first official day of uh, summer coming up next week, too. So things are blooming, and it rained, and it's going to rain some more tomorrow, and Oh, joy. (laughs) I don't mind it, really. I don't mind it, really. I love the spring, summer, and early fall. I I don't do well in the cold. I really don't. Um, The arthritis throughout my skeletal system is just really sensitive to the cold, and it does, and my nervous system is, too. I was never one that could be out in the cold very long. All of my life, I never could be out in the cold very long, so um, you know, all the other kids would be out for hours playing and running and carrying on, and I'd be out, <clears throat> pardon me, I'd be out for 10 or 15 minutes, and I was like an ice cube, and I just, I couldn't stand it. My hands hurt. I, was, I mean, I don't know. I've never had frostbite that I, I mean, or anything, so, but yeah, I, I would just be in pain. I would just, be, and you know, I can get those thin slate, T-H-I-N, thin slate gloves, and and stuff and and still I just the cold just goes right through I mean I really get cold so I I don't know what the deal is I don't know what the deal is hi if you're this is Robin (laughs) I'm Robin Holstein of Holstein House um, and uh, I want to welcome you to episode 71 71 of the Holstein House broadcast changed it over from podcast to broadcast because I post this on the video as well, not just the audio. I do post the audio to fountain.fm over there and uh, hope if uh, the folks that are over there that might hear the show will find something interesting to clip and share and share it with your friends so that we can grow the show and uh, get a little more interactivity going on here. Uh, I do have a little bit of a um, um, outline for the show. We're going to talk a little bit about um, Tracer. J- well, not so much Tracer, but the the Jade and the cold wallets for Bitcoin. I did look that up a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the, the next part of for people who are considering starting an Airbnb or a B and B. It doesn't have to be Air, but that's what more people are familiar with. So it's kind of like saying Band Aid for bandage and. Uh, <clears throat> The, the garden and stuff and we've got guests coming this week and it's just hectic the june has been really hectic so far mostly good but some of it's just ugh. but we'll get to that listen so you can find me almost all the social media uh, uh applications and and programs and stuff i'm we're over there on uh, holstein houses on the facebook <clears throat> we're on rumble uh, obviously we're on youtube uh, well, it's under Robin Holstein on YouTube. Um, we're on uh, TikTok under Robin Holstein. We're on, most of these are under Robin Holstein. Uh, we're on uh, Clapper. We're on uh, Rumble. We're on MeWe. We're on 
uh, freesteading. We're on, um, I said Rumble already, Instagram. Um, darn it, tw- man, Twitter. I'm kind of losing interest in Twitter. Noster, Noster, wherever they're on Noster. And we have a Telegram group. So if you are in, if you have uh, an account with Telegram, you want, may want to go over and look at t.me slash Holstein House, all one word, H-O-L-S-T-E-I-N House, H-O-U-S-C, um, over on Telegram and join the group. You may have to, uh, wait a minute, um, I should have that set up, I've had a couple of bots try to get in there and, well, they did, and I had to delete them and I've had a couple of, uh, I get, you know, those just, you know, junk accounts over there. So, well, you get them everywhere. You get them everywhere. But yeah, people just say, hello. I mean, it's it's just a, a troll or junk or something like that. So, um, yeah, YouTube, Fountain, Noster, Rumble, TikTok, Clapper, Facebook, Instagram, me, we freesteading. Uh, the podcast goes off uh, through because I upload to Podbean and they distribute it through um, Apple and Spotify and Amazon and TuneIn and iHeart player and listener and, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, if you will, depending on what app you're using, if you'll thumbs up or like or a little heart or boost or zap or <laughs> clip, subscribe, share, all that happy stuff, I really would appreciate it. I'd like to grow the uh, the uh, um, community. And, um, you know, I, I, get, I get it that not everyone's interested in, uh, you know, adding... Uh, a B&B to their homestead, but uh, it's not just homestead. It's not just, or well, it's not just B&B. It's not just B&B. We, I talk about the garden. I talk about the ducklings and the chickens, and and we talk about things that are working and things that aren't, and uh, cooking and preserving and things like that. So, and as a matter of fact, well, I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, so, <laughs> Yesterday I had a brief scare. Um, I was getting some things together to do. I, when I have, I, I try to save. Obviously, we all do. We, or most of us do, try to save things uh, if they're getting towards the end of their shelf life, uh, and that can be refrigerator shelf, freezer shelf, or pantry shelf. So I have had some um, uh, milk because Mr. Holstein and I don't drink a lot of milk. But I offer it for my guests, and some guests drink it, some guests don't. I obviously don't keep anything that they've poured into their glass. It's going down the drain. But when when I buy a, a half a gallon of milk and my guests don't finish that and it's starting to get, you know, towards the end of its life, I will make yogurt. And then when the, or, or buttermilk, and then when the yogurt uh, has, you know, been there a couple of days and nobody's um, finished it off, I'll take that yogurt and I'll make uh, cream cheese. And then, you know, once that cream cheese is at the end of its life, I give it to the animals outside. So you, this is a process that you can go through to extend the use and, um, and the uh, um, life of a product. Each of the steps requires something different. I also make buttermilk. I have a perpetual buttermilk going. So it's uh, it's really easy to do. I've got videos on YouTube about doing it. I've got videos on the um, cream cheese. I've got videos on the yogurt. I've got videos on all of those things over on YouTube. And so I was in and out of the refrigerator. And I was also yesterday, I was feeding my sourdough starter. I have neglected my poor little sourdough starter for a couple of weeks. But I keep mine in the refrigerator asleep when you put them in there they kind of they're dozing they might munch a little bit on a few of the sugars but but it's not an active um starter so i i take it out you know not really on a regular basis because you don't really have to but um if you keep it in the refrigerator that way i I take it out and feed it and take the discard and usually they'll make um pancakes or bagels or something out of the discard so i'm not throwing away much of anything so if you if you understand how sourdough bread works the sourdough is equal parts water flour and um water flour and um uh, water and flour i know why i'm i'm i know why i'm blanking out there because to to create the starter it's just water and flour and time but then when you feed it it's starter 
flour and water and equal parts of starter flour and water. And that's where my brain was locking up because I was thinking there's a third thing, but it's not a third until you already have the starter. Anyway, so I was feeding my starters yesterday. So I was in and out of that refrigerator a lot, a lot. And I, I got into the freezer uh, to check or to take something out to thaw for dinner and noticed there was a lot of frost in there. And it's a self-defrosting freezer. And I thought, this isn't good. And then I was doing you know, the defrost was running. And so it caused me to pay attention to it all morning while I was doing all these things. I mean, um, I spent several hours yesterday morning working on all of these things. And um, <laughs> so I kept, I kept stopping and thinking, what, what am I hearing? What am I hearing? And it was the fan. And so the fan was on and um, <laughs> with the fan on there, the defrost uh, was running. And so with the defrost running, the, um, refrigerator never actually stopped making noise and I kept hearing it. and I'm like that defrost fan that's not kicking off so I messaged the husband our refrigerator may be going out again because he's replaced that um control thing before for the defrost I don't know what it's called either but um it's uh it, it times the defrost cycle and they'll go bad and it, so it's constantly on defrost and then it'll cause a lot of water to build up and the machine will kind of dribble in the floor and and people will get rid of the refrigerators because of that and think, oh, you know, there's something terribly wrong with it. And it can be fixed. Now, he obviously knows how to do it. So it only costs us the part and his time. But, you know, you can have it repaired. But um, anyway, so I, I messaged him and I said, I think the refrigerator is going out again. Well, I, as I'm putting all these things back in, um, I have several containers of, I was going to try to get a and a picture of the um of the uh what i was doing yesterday because i did take a picture and i did put it up on social media but i didn't save it to this machine or put it out there where i could get to it easy to show you i don't think i'll 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 work on that while i'm sitting here and see if uh, if i got that synced um into the cloud because i don't i don't worry about the pictures that i put up They've got access to them regardless. So anyway, uh, but as I was putting all the things, all these other things that need to be done. And um, I changed the, the, the temperature thing on it. So nine is the highest temperature and one is the lowest temperature. And it was sitting on five and I bumped it down one and boom, that fan went off. And I thought to myself, it's doing this because I had the door open too long. The temperature didn't actually drop low enough for the bell because it has this thing that beeps at you when, it, when the temperature gets below 40 or gets above 40 uh, because that's not safe. Pardon me. And um, it, 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 never, it never beeped at me. So I didn't think the temperature had gone below 40. Above 40. Jeez Louise. This was a morning and um so i knew i thought well it's 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 just not cool enough and i was all I, four or five different times i um uh checked the door you know felt around the gaskets and the door and made sure the doors were closed good and and they were i even opened it up one time and just kind of mashed it really hard <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that it, it was uh, closed tight. Here's the, uh, here, let me share this with you. And it, and it was, it was closed tight. Let's see, setting. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, so anyway, it ends up just being that um, uh, I didn't have the door, uh, right? The, the, it's just too warm in there. Here's what I was working on yesterday. Let me see. Will that take over the whole screen? I don't know if you'll see this in the full screen or not. But this is what I was working on yesterday. If you can see it, this is some yogurt starting. This is uh, this is the milk that I heated. And it's got a little piece of plastic wrap over. And it's got the thermometer in the middle so I can keep track. Because you heat it up over 180. And you draw, let it cool down to about 112, 118, somewhere in there. And then you mix your yogurt culture. Which you can't probably see. But it's down here. 
the uh, yogurt culture that I used from my last batch of yogurt. These are my starters that I had not worked on yet. You can see some of these had separated and you just mix that back in. There's the buttermilk that I was working on. I marked the jar that says buttermilk and the date that I started it. And this is the yogurt that's draining. I'm draining the whey off so that uh, I can make my cream cheese. And it should be ready. Oh, I forgot to salt it. Can't think of it. So this is some of the stuff that I was working on yesterday. And um, stop sharing. Uh, that was yesterday morning. And that's why it takes so long. Or it was taken so long yesterday. And why the refrigerator just was constantly open. <laughs> so I also started a, 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 a bowl of uh, sourdough. So it's upstairs raising. I need to get it mixed up before, or uh, kneaded and stuff before I leave to go over to the church today. And so I was thinking here, I'm going to have to re replace this refrigerator when, in fact, it was just too warm in there because I'd had the door open too long. Very simple. But, you know, when you're stressed and it just feels like it's one thing after another. And um, it was very aggravating for me. <clears throat> But I got all of those things started and set aside. And so the um, the uh, cream cheese set and has drained. It's now in the refrigerator cooling off. I'll, I'll have to go in and, and grab it. But uh, um, put some salt in it before it sets up too much more. It, it I just put it in there before I came down here to the bunker to uh, to to video or to to um, record this. Now, let's move on to the um, b and part. So we've talked about uh, deciding to uh, host people in your home. And we've decided, uh, we've discussed pets. Uh, how pet, whether you want to take pets and how uh, service dogs, remember it's dogs, it's not animals, it's service dogs. Uh, can affect how you treat your guests, whether if your guests have them, whether you're allowed to um, refuse them and how you go about and all those things and share that information with you. Today, we want to talk just a little bit about business structure. Now, I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a legal expert on this. I'm just giving you some general basic information that I was able to glean. And I've got a link for you for the Small Business Administration in the notes so that you can go and look at that for a little more detail. Now, if you're considering hosting, um, if, if you're considering hosting guests either in your home, your homestead, or in a structure on your property, you know, it, it doesn't, like we've talked before, it doesn't have to be your physical house. It can be a building or an apartment or something like that. You need to decide on a business structure because you're going to have to pay taxes uh, unless you can find a way not to. And I don't advocate that. And um, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you, you need to consider um, your business structure. Now, in the United States, there are uh, quite a few different ways you can do it. But there's a couple of ways that are usually usually considered and um, people op often will will do. A lot of folks will start out as a sole proprietorship. Now a sole proprietorship is where you're a single owner. It's just you. Generally you're using your social security number to pay your taxes. And um, you as the single member, single owner manage the, the business. It's easy to form. Uh, there's no annual reports or business tax. Well, there's there's taxes on the income, but there's not separate B and O taxes, business and occupation taxes. Um, it's hard to raise money if that's what you're doing. If you're trying to do a big project, I mean, there are obviously you can do a Kickstarter or something like that. But uh, actually, going out to lenders and rate getting money raised, it's it's really hard to do. Uh, and you as a sole proprietorship using just your social security number have unlimited liability for everything that might happen. So if someone trips, 
they can sue you pers they would sue you personally because you are the sole proprietor you are the business and you could potentially lose everything i mean that's the extreme but it is a, a possibility it's easy to start and a lot of people will start that way and then uh, start looking or talk to their CPA and, you know, because they want to get started. They're anxious to get going and a lot of people will just jump in and start. Um, it's it's getting a little more difficult now that uh, Airbnb is so popular and the commercialization of this is so popular and it, that it's getting more difficult to just do that. But keep in mind, you know, if you're going to go sole proprietorship, um, you're just, you're going, it's going to be you. It's going to be all on you. It's going to be your social security or your personal tax identification number that you're going to pay the income taxes on. And aside from it being easy, you're liable for everything. You personally are liable. Now, I, there are a couple of others. There's some partnerships and there's some S corps and there's these big corps and there's this other, but the, I, I can't get into this because I don't know anything at all about them, but I can talk to you just a tad about the LLC option, the limited liability corporation. That's what I chose. I'm not recommending you do it. I, like I said, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a business uh, accountant. I don't, I don't do this for a living. This is just myself, my experience. I studied, I went to the SBA site and the IRS site in my local state, and I looked around at the different structures, and I chose the LLC option, the Limited Liability Corporation. Um, corporations are a more complex business structure. Uh, the, cor the corporation is separate from the owners, so... Um, some people have, and I'm not saying that you do, but some people have trouble making that distinction. It's my corporation, but I'm not personally liable for everything. Um, people get into that uh, us, them, and big corporation mentality and don't realize that the corporation is a legal body just as if it was an android. It's a legal entity all to itself. And um, it, it can cost a lot of money to form a corporation as a whole. Uh, it doesn't cost that much for an LLC. I can't speak to everybody's situation, but for mine, I felt like it wasn't that much. And I pay $25 a year to renew it to my Secretary of State's office at, at the state level. <clears throat> It can be uh, expensive to maintain a corporation because you have reporting that has to be done. I have, have an annual report that goes to the Secretary of State's office, and I have quarterly taxes that are due. So I estimate the tax burden that's going to be on me, and I pay those, and then, you know, you settle up at the end of the tax year. So there's paperwork that has to be done there, and you think, well, it's just online paperwork. doesn't take too long. If you think, if you think, not that you're doing it, but if you think as if you're paying someone at least minimum wage for your area to fill out those forms, you start seeing that, okay, even if it takes me a half an hour, if minimum wage is 10 bucks, that was $5 spent to fill out this form plus whatever, you know, you may have to submit with it. Um there's there's other legal stuff that has to be done because the feds need stuff, your state needs stuff, sometimes your county needs stuff, and sometimes your city needs stuff. Or if you're not in a, a city, it may just be your county or your parish. <clears throat> um, but it does have advantages. It has advantages that as a, as a limited liability company, um, you can go to lenders generally and get money if you need a big money for a bigger project. Um, you're, you personally are also not liable. The corporation and the corporation assets, because that's one of the forms you have to fill out, the assets like this laptop that I'm looking at here is considered a, an asset uh, to the company, even though it's depreciated beyond use, but I'm still using it. My county still counts it as a couple of bucks towards my, what I owe every year. So um, 
there are different levels of companies, S Corps, B Corps, C Corps. I, like I said, I, I went LLC, Limited Liability Corporation. And they have um, different responsibilities to your local, state, and federal government uh, that you may have to file. Um, and like I said, I put a link to the SBA, which the U.S. Small Business Administration, in the um, description or the show notes, depending on what program you're using for this. And you can look at that and get a lot more detail. I'm just sharing with you that you need to consider this. It's another thing to consider when you start to think about opening or operating your own um, B&B. Now, if you're the type of homestead that you're already selling stuff and you've already got a business license, you probably know this stuff and you're rolling your eyes at me and saying, ah, oh, come on. You can, you can add that and, you know, as, as something else as another source of income. But uh, you also need to consider, depending on where you are and your size, um, you may also have to, uh, and I probably should have split this off as a different, um, a different for a different day, and I may go back and do that in a little more detail, but you need to also be aware that you may be required prior to or shortly after opening to um, file with the health department. I suspect that most of the folks that are going to be watching this, for me, are not going to have to do that because you're going to be too small. Um, a lot of places, you have to have five rooms or less, and that's something that you need to check with your local county health department or parish health department first. Start with your sanitarians there in your local county or parish and ask them, say, I'm going to open a small B&B in my home or on my homestead. Um, do I need to have, and you may be of the mind, I'm not going to offer, and I'm not, I don't, you know, until somebody comes and tells me to shut it down, it's easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission. I get that, and that's fine too. If that's how you want to do it, I, I totally understand it. That's not the way my brain works most of the time because I don't want to lose what I have because I goofed up. Okay. So I did go to talk to, after I uh, set up Holstein House LLC, I did go to my local health department, asked to speak to the sanitarian and explain to them that um, I'm going to start a, a B&B from my home and I want to make sure whether I have to be inspected or not. And so they said, how many rooms you got? I said, just the one. They said, nah, you're not, there's nothing. But they did encourage me to complete the, um, com um, food handlers and manager certification. And I thought to myself, I'm a, <laughs> okay, first off, the reason you would do that would be because you're required to have a commercial kitchen and, or simulate a commercial kitchen. And that's going to be, if you're going to be inspected, I'm not going to have to be inspected, but I do want to give my guests uh, a good feeling about how the food that I offer them is prepared. And I want my kitchen as best and close as possible to match what will be required in a commercial kitchen. And a commercial kitchen, as a rule, requires a three bowl sink. I can't do that. I don't I don't have room for a three bowl sink. I have a two bowl uh, antique enamel two board uh, two drain board sink and the best I can do is use one bowl for the wash and rinse so I don't fill it completely up you know I just put some some dish soap and some hot water in there I wash this I rinse it on the same side and then I have a, a plastic uh, wash basin that I set down in the other bowl um, and then I put bleach water in it. And after I have rinsed the dish soap and stuff off on this side, I take it down through the bleach water and then I put it in the rack to dry, air dry. So I'm getting that uh, three bowl sink um, action just the same. Okay. Uh, the other thing that they tend to require is a separate hand washing station. Uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. 
I don't, I, there's no way to put in a, a hand, just a hand washing place there. I just make sure that I have my hands washed out of the bathroom and I frequently wash my hands at the sink um, in between things. And I save the dishes for last so that I have the, and I also have the dishwasher too, but so that I'm, I'm making sure that everything is clean as possible. Now I don't do a lot of cooking for my guests unless they're direct book guests and direct book guests get some special options on that so it's not a it's not as big a deal as if i was serving you know big sit-down breakfast like the bigger b&b's do so it's i haven't had to add that much to what i'm doing i have reviewed there are they're older but it's still good information a lot of the um uh food safety videos and things that you can find on YouTube. And you find the good ones, not from somebody out of their house. You find the ones from the health department. I have watched through those. I understand those. I know what they're saying. So, you know, you've got to have your, your, your food should always be, your food and your, your things should always be like six inches off the floor. So I've made sure that anything that is going to be served to my guests or served on like a plate or whatever is at least six inches off the floor. And, um, you know, the temperature in the refrigerator, the temperature in the freezer, uh, the three bowl sink thing and all of that stuff um, so that I understand what would be required if I was being inspected. So, oh, pardon me again. I've got the combination of the hiccups. Um, so I haven't actually I'm not going to actually take that food handler certification or food management certification. But I have gone through a lot of videos to make sure that I understand what's going on there and what the point is and why. And because I don't want my guests to get ill from something that I've served them. I'm, like I've talked about before, the, uh, the antique milk cooler that would have sat on the front porch of someone's home and keeping the milk jars in there, the antique jars, uh, bottles uh, from the milk blossom dairy that, that I have, that I put the milk and the juice in and, keeping that iced and keeping the ice above the, the, the milk in the one and the juice in the other and keeping that cold, those type of things, not letting cold foods get hot and hot foods get cold and just all of that. Because I also provide, you know, um, a, a, um, a serving of butter and, and jelly and cream cheese to go with the bagels and the, and the uh, English muffins and stuff. So, and so you have to keep those all at different temperatures and I just have different steps and things that I have uh, to to make sure that it's all healthy, you know, and uh, it won't make my, my guests sick because nobody wants your guests to get sick. So there's that. <laughs> and um, I want to remind you uh, that there's the special promo code for um, guests podcast five p-o-d-c-a-s-t five is always active as five percent off if you have watched this broadcast or listened to the audio podcast just use podcast five um, for your promo code when you direct book and you'll get five percent off your stay the west virginia 10 west virginia day 10 percent is just almost over there's not a lot of time to use that um, you have to book before the 16th, which is um, Thursday, which is this Friday. You have to book before then, and your stay has to fall between the 16th and the 23rd. And we are booked, uh, it would have to be the 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, or 23rd. So you, you would only have a few days next week to use it, and you have to book it by Friday. And as a direct book only, West Virginia Day gives you 10% off of your stay. And your stay has to be between the 16th and the 23rd. And those dates are not all open. I do have guests across those dates. So you go to direct book, put in the dates and see if it's available. And I uh, use the promo code WVDAY for 10% off your stay next week. Um, if you want to use Bitcoin, that's all well and good too. If you prefer to reserve your room with uh, Bitcoin, I can do that. My shoulders hurt. And that's why I'm setting money. Um, I can do that. I can invoice you with a QR code and build in a 15% discount. Now that's not on top of the 10. It's a total of 15% discount off your stay. Uh, I only hold the date for 24 hours. I'm only going to hold the date for 24 hours. You have to pay that invoice within 24 hours. Uh, if you do not, I will release it, uh, release the room. 
uh, for anybody else to take. So uh, it's an extra 5% off the West Virginia Day um, discount if you are booking with Bitcoin. The packages that are, are, are being offered are still the uh, chocolate and coffee, um, special in-room treat for my direct book guests of Hall's handcrafted premium chocolates, and a serving of almost heaven whole bean coffee roasted by Coal River Coffee, ground fresh before you have your breakfast. So, And that it, package will be good through the end of the year. So go to RobinHolstein.com and choose Holstein House from the menu. And then select direct book to use these specials and these promotional codes. Uh, you'll see the option for the chocolate and coffee when you book. And you should you, you, you would choose it when you book. It's good for stays between now and December 31st. It's not available for Airbnb guests. So oh, let's talk about the garden for a few minutes. Both of them. We got a front porch garden and the backyard garden. Both of them are small container gardens, but that's okay. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. The front porch fruit and vegetable gardens are coming along nicely. Uh, I have seen some evidence of bug damage on the the um, the strawberries that are on the ground in the old flower bed. So if you're if you're not familiar, if you haven't been with me that long, I ha am com slowly converting my flower bed um, into a uh, fruit and vegetable garden. I had wanted to put lettuce in there this year. I didn't get that done, but I did get two some strawberry plants and a blueberry uh, bush put in, and um, the strawberries are growing nicely. They are producing fruit, but the bugs are getting to the fruit now, um, especially with the rain that we've had in the last few days. So I have, uh, I, I did see some folks talking about to put some, some coffee grounds down and that may discourage them. So I, I, I did a circle around the, um, the strawberry plants and put some coffee grounds down in that and see if that will work to discourage the bugs that are trying to get on them. The hanging baskets of, of strawberries are producing very nicely. They are. Some of them are nice size, nice size. Some of them are wee tiny, but um, I know they take a lot of water. They take a lot of water. And hindsight tells me that I should um, find a way to automate that a little more, whether it's, I've got some of these little spiky things, but they're kind of big uh, that you put on a water bottle and you turn it upside down and it slowly disperses that water. But they're awfully big for those pots. I haven't seen any small ones uh, that look like they would last more than 10 minutes. Um, but um, I'm not sure if there's a way I could do it. Maybe, well, to do it next year, it, I got to get through this year first. <laughs> but right now I'm having to water them a couple times a day. And all it's not a big deal. It's just more time. It's just more time that uh, that's being taken from my already overtaxed day but they're coming along nicely the strawberries are delicious too and i don't have to worry about you know preservatives and they last longer than the ones you get at the store if you can imagine if i go pick them today they're still good tomorrow they can make it to the refrigerator without growing mold so um i know a lot of you guys have uh, experienced that my blueberries aren't producing yet i guess that could be next year that they produce because since i just planted it this year uh, so we'll see what happens there. The backyard garden, the cherry tomatoes. Oh, there's a tomato plant on the front porch too. It's starting to get yellow leaves. And I was looking that up. And one suggestion for that is uh, because it's not, um, it's not bugs. There's no bugs or anything on it. I looked up and one suggestion was some Epsom salt. So I'm putting a little bit of Epsom salt on and see if that will help. Um, but those, those cherry, those tomatoes, I think they're plum tomatoes. They're really good. Oh, my gosh. I picked them. I washed them. I ate them. Oh, they were so good. But uh, the backyard cherry uh, tomatoes are growing. They're starting to grow a little bit of fruit. I think those fruit are high enough that the that the um, groundhog won't get them and the chickens can't reach them. I think. Now, chickens can hop. I've seen chickens hop for fruit before. We're hoping that that will get up high enough. Uh, the groundhog, I don't know. I, have, I posted a video in the Telegram group of Bob the dog rolling the groundhog, the little groundhog. Um, and um, I, I didn't like it because he was going to try to kill it, but he, he might have got a hold of it. I didn't see any signs of blood anywhere and he didn't have any groundhog fur in his teeth. So I think just basically he rolled it a few times and it got away from him. I haven't seen it back out front. I don't know if it's going out back, but it has been leaving that um, 
that broccoli plant alone, that asparagus broccoli thing alone. But unfortunately, it bolted while I was at at the conference over the weekend. So I come back and it was in bloom. So I didn't get it cut. I haven't figured it out. It does have a few more little ones on it. So hopefully we'll see um, if I can uh, catch those in time for uh, another um, another opportunity to try it. Now, the uh, sweet peppers are also starting to grow. They're not growing very fast, but they are growing. The ducklings, on the other hand, are growing very fast. <laughs> they are getting really big. The male is keeping them chased into the run when I try to let them out to free range. He does not want them out. I don't know if they're all four males or if there's just one male. I don't know. But every time he sees them out, he's running them back in. And I don't like that because they need to be allowed to get out too. And so yesterday I did uh, I did kind of have him um, blocked into the front yard, but he got around it. I don't, I'm not sure how he got around it. I don't, maybe he could have flew across. It's not that tall, but I don't know. He got around it or got under it or got, he got through it somehow. But that was after several hours. So they did get quite a few hours out in the, uh, out in the yard. I know that it's nature, you know, but I don't like it those little guys need to grow up. I need to know what they are. If they're males, then I can try to find, rehome them or freezer camp them. Uh, if they're females, I want them for eggs, you know. So, uh, but they're, they're, they're good size now. Their feathers are coming out. The color on their chest is, uh, is showing nicely. To me, they look like they're all girls. Oh, they're changing. Their, <laughs> their voices are changing too. But I can't tell if they're, I, I can't tell yet still if they're male or female. Because the mother, the mother Rowan, she has a deeper quack than my Pekin female has. So I don't, I can't, I'm having a hard time. This, I, I, the, when they were, my Pekins, I could tell. It kind of, it was really obvious. But these little guys, I can't tell. They're either all for the same thing or. I don't know, but uh, the eggs I put under the broody Isa, my Isa Brown, I don't think they're going to hatch. I really don't. I've gone out there too many times. And what's happening is I did catch it in mid action is some of the other hens are trying to squeeze her out of that box, nest box she's in because she's sitting. And I have gone out and found the eggs rolled out and, you know, a green egg or something or a, a white egg under her that shouldn't be there. So, um, I'm thinking they probably aren't going to make it, but that's, that's, a, we've still got a couple of weeks on that. And I'm just going to leave it. If they don't hatch by the, tw what I say, the 28th, then about the 30th, I'll take them out of there and get rid of them and, um, and uh, make her stop, uh, get her off there. And I did tell you that I found the Easter egg, right? I did tell you I had one chicken that I couldn't find one evening when I went through to, um, and I did the head count. There was somebody missing. And she was back the next afternoon. So I don't know where she went, but I think that's an old note on my paper here. So uh, let me remind you to go to robinholstein.com and choose Holstein House from the menu. You can learn more about Holstein House learn read some of our reviews i need to update those they're kind of old but but i do have a lot more reviews um out there that i can that i need to uh, uh screenshot and get posted there and um learn learn about the house learn about our lifestyle learn about how to book your room and um, you go to robinholstein.com and check holstein house in the menu Oh, let's see. It is a quarter till. I am. Um, I there's still the festival. Festival is happening all this week, but we don't. I don't have uh, availability this week. Um, this is the uh, 13th, so all of these are are gone. Um, there's uh, uh, well, yeah, festival all this week. The coal festival uh, starts today the west virginia coal festival in madison um that's fun i'd love to get down there but i kind of think i'm not going to be able to um thursday is uh, pepperoni roll day i am just gonna be so busy thursday i've got to take dad to two appointments and then we've got guests coming in so i don't know if i'll get to make pepperoni rolls or not um yak fest in st albans is coming up wine and, and jazz music festival on the 17th in charleston um through the 24th is the Freedom Festival, the Quilt Festival, the 22nd through the 24th, Mountain State Art and Crafts Fair over 4th of July weekend. So, I, like I mentioned before, this is episode 71. 
uh, of the Holstein House podcast. Uh, we premiered on the Fountain.fm uh, network. And um, if you participate in the Value for Value Exchange, uh, I ask you to share this with your friends and share value. If I made you laugh, smile, think, angry, you know, vomit. <laughs> Hope you'll express that through zaps or tips or boosts. And be sure to hit the, hit the like or the heart or whatever the, um, the icon is in the, in the application or the program you're using right now that shows that, that you, you think this was good. And uh, subscribe. Please subscribe. And if you're traveling to or through West Virginia on Interstate 6477 or the West Virginia Turnpike and you're looking for a place to stay, consider Holstein House. We accept reservations via Airbnb or direct book on uh, direct book. Guests get better values. It, it eliminates the middle band uh, and you get special offers through direct book like our coffee and chocolate pack, package uh, opportunities for special breakfast items. I haven't talked about those for a while. Uh, so go to robinholstein.com and select Holstein House from that menu. So um, I've got my time winding down here. I don't want to get too bogged down in outside stuff, but I did want to kind of mention this is really a current event. Uh, topic here so it uh, the that i-95 bridge in uh, pennsylvania up near was it philadelphia it's in philadelphia i was watching the news last night and saw that uh come up and excuse me and was watching the five and and i just was shaking my head the whole time it was on i mean i try i don't watch a lot of news anymore it's just driving me crazy and this was no exception um so they're talking about this and, and, and I, you know, <laughs> on September 11th, 2001, when the planes hit the World Trade Center, there were scads and oodles of people who said it was an inside job. You just can't melt buildings and, and steel doesn't, doesn't melt like that and concrete and oh, the humanity and all the things. That's what came to my mind yesterday when I was seeing pictures of this because I've been hearing it, the headlines on the on the radio and stuff, but I hadn't seen pictures of it yet. And I saw it yesterday. And the first thing that came to my mind was that because you've got one tanker, one tanker full of gasoline burning under this bridge. And lo and behold, <laughs> the structure fails. I mean, and I've shared with you before, my dad was a welder. I've seen him use a torch, a blowtorch, to cut through metal. I've seen him use a, a welding rod to put pieces of metal together. And I've seen that metal fly off there, you know, a, as it was heating and, and it was dripping on the floor. And the little pieces of metal that you could burn your foot on if you were barefoot in the shop when dad was welding and, and torching stuff. I mean, you know, metal... You, it, it, you, you get how it's made. It has to be really hot before they push it through the forms and stuff. So if it gets really hot, it's going to, yeah. You can pour metal. If you've ever gone to a steel mill, you can see them pour metal. Pour the steel into the stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, it does melt at high enough temperatures. Uh, the concrete will collapse. It, it destroyed the structure of that bridge. Um, and it's probably the two abutting pieces are going to have to be removed as well because the ends of those pieces uh, were damaged. I, I caught a glimpse of that on the, uh, on the photos, but uh, so yeah, uh, steel will succumb uh, to the intense heat of an explosion or, or a fire. I mean, if it's, if it's hot, hot enough temperature and uh, the bridge wasn't made of wood, you know, it was made of concrete and steel and it went down and, uh, and you'll have that. Then the, <laughs> Then I'm seeing Harold Ford Jr. Uh, wonder if other bridges would collapse under similar conditions. He actually said that. Actually said that. And I looked at the television and I said, yeah. And then Janine Pereiro, uh said something about the, the poor, poor state of Pennsylvania's infrastructure. Well, hello. Um, the whole country is full of uh, deteriorating infrastructure that no, uh, regardless of the political affiliation, uh, our, our representatives, our Congress and our president haven't seen fit to fix. We've got all this money that we can send to um, other nations. 
We've got all this money we can send over to um, um, the wars in Ukraine. We've got all this money we can send to China for stuff, which I guess is going to stop now because of their misbehaving. But we don't have money to fix our own infrastructure. Hello? Rome crumbled from within, people. But even a structurally sound bridge is going to collapse under those conditions. Jeez Louise. Uh, let me talk just real briefly about Bitcoin and my wallets. I mentioned the other day that I was looking into um, the cold card wallet and the Jade wallets. I, I was reading up on those some yesterday while I was watching that crap on the news. And I'm kind of leaning now towards cold card. I, I like it. Uh, I'd never heard of either of them, uh, but I was reading on them yesterday evening and I'm leading toward cold card. Cold card. Jade requires me to add another hot wallet or, or online wallet. There's another wallet it wants you to have. It doesn't work with the ones I've already got. Cold card will work with blue wallet, which I already have. Um, and the online guide for cold car was easier for me to read. Now, I am not a coder. I am not a developer. Uh, I am not, I don't, I don't do that stuff. No interest in it. I, I've used this analogy before. I don't have to build engines to drive a car. That's just where I'm at. So I, I'm leaning towards cold card and, um, Right now, just sats that I've earned is around 23,000 or 230,000. I have more than that because I bought into uh, on the dips and stuff. But what I've earned is about 230,000. I need to start reinvesting that back into to um, my followers and my communities out there. Uh, now that I have enough that I feel like you know, it was worth it because I see people giving away 10,000 here and there. And I'm like, I don't have enough to do that. You know, but um, I kind of, if I'm, if I am resourceful and if I am frugal with it, we can do stuff like that. Uh, now that I've reached that point, I'm going to just spend about two minutes. I have a lot more to say, but I'm only going to spend about two minutes on the conference that I went to uh, for the church. I did stay in the dorm. I'm still paying the price for that. That mattress was a nightmare and the bed just was horrible. It was um, it was a twin size bed, which wasn't the issue. It was raised up so that they have these dressers, dresser drawers that fit, fit under it, which was part of the issue because I had to get back behind that to get to the outlet to put the um, power surge strip into the outlet so I can plug in all the things. And when I leaned across that, I did, I bruised my legs on the metal of the of the uh, bed uh, mattress um, box springs. No major deal, but I mean, you know, there it is. Um, but yeah, the mattress, I'm still so sore in my back uh, from that mattress. It just, those two nights just really, really wrecked it. Plus the drive up and back. I just don't travel that well. My back has been an issue since I was in my 20s, in my early 20s. After I had my first couple kids, my back has been an issue and it's been deteriorating ever since. And I was a lot lighter back then. So it wasn't my weight that caused it at that point. My weight's aggravating it now, but it wasn't the cause of the issue. Um, but anyway, I, so uh, the, the, but I, I mean, I can't complain. I'm not really complaining, complaining, but I am complaining. It's not, you know, um, I didn't enjoy the conference. Maybe I set myself up for that because I was nervous and anxious about it anyway. But uh, the campus was beautiful. I love moving around on that campus. Um, but it was the, the, it was about 97% of us were, were, were 55 or older. Um, and we were sitting in hours long meetings. Yeah, you could get up and you could walk around. You could walk out to, out to the restroom and come back and stuff but you could miss the call for the vote so you, you had to be very careful about when you decided to get up and go out but the worst part for me uh it didn't affect anybody else but me at this point um at this point was that i learned that our district superintendent has not found a new pastor for our church and um i told him at that point i said because i thought maybe i could meet the new pastor there i figured well if there's a new pastor then you know, uh, I can meet him, probably be there. 
Uh, but he wasn't, or she, could have been a she, just the habit of saying he. And I told him, I said, I'm just going to have to rethink all of this. I'm just going to have to rethink all of this because I, I can't keep this pace up. I can't keep this pace up. And and he said, and which was the, the most awful thing to say to me at that point, let's get together this week and talk. You come to Charleston and talk. And I about threw my phone across the room. This was a text message because he was busy with the conference. Um, because he just assumed that I had plenty of time to just drop by his office in Charleston and talk. Well, I don't. And that's what I've been trying to tell him. I don't. Now I'm kind of getting, getting myself all jacked up here. And I really didn't want to do that. I, I mean, I, I have no idea where people get the idea that I don't do anything and that I have time to just, oh, I'll just drive to Charleston. We'll just go have lunch or we'll have a chat. And I'll spend 45 minutes and sit with him and get nothing accomplished. He's made, he's made no effort to, to figure out what I'm doing. He really has made no effort. And he, his one comment was to meet the, to meet your church requirements or something like that. the only requirement we had, and I put it to the members the only requirement we had was that it cannot be a, a church service prior to 10 o'clock. He wanted us to have a service at nine. I put it to the membership. I told him, I said, I can't do that. I mean, if they want to do it, that's fine. But I personally can't do it. So we we did discuss it in a in, in business meeting. And the, the, the it was unanimous. Now, there's not a whole lot of us to be unanimous, but it was unanimous. They don't they can't do an earlier service. But they would do a later service in the afternoon or they would do a Saturday morning service. So we're open to everything except that one thing. And, oh, we can't meet your the, what you what you require. Really? Hmm. So I'm aggravated about it. I, I shouldn't I shouldn't be probably, but I am. And um, I don't call people out by name. I'm not going to name him here. That's not the point of my life is to out people. And if that's seen as passive aggressive, too bad. But so I, I just, I don't, I mean, I have a long list of things that I do all day here. It goes on for paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, but from, from, you know, we get up at four 30. I've got to get the dogs to get up right away. I've got to let them out, get them fed, feed the cats, then take a shower, then go out to the coop and feed and water the chickens and the ducks and check on all of them and collect eggs throughout the day and, and come back and, and tidy up the house and do the dishes and cook and get things ready for dinner and do the laundry. I mean, I just, I, I went into great detail in my notes today, but I'm not going to read through all that because I've been on here an hour and I have to get to the church shortly, which is another thing that you don't just throw together a church service. You've got to pick the music. You've got to pick the readings. You've got to choose the verses that you're going to read. And if you're doing a sermon or a message, you have to write it. And it has to be good. And it has to be ready. And you have to be able to deliver it. And you have to get there early enough because you don't have people to come in and turn the lights on and 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 get the bulletins out. And plus, you have to create the bulletins. You create the bulletins. You get the bulletins out. You get the music listed. You get, you know, and, and set up for our live stream. And this is, you know... You, and then you do it all next week, plus, you know, the things that we've got going on right now. If we had a pastor, I wouldn't have to worry so much about Sunday. I could focus more. It wouldn't be a, as big a deal. But I'm, well, you guys, most of you guys know it. I'm not going to go on because I, I can go on for hours and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start wrapping. And, I, you know, again, I want to thank um H.J. for his continued support and, and Euphrosinos has been out there. Euphrosinos has come and gone a couple of times and uh, gets in here every now and again. And then there's a TGG over on Fountain. TGG. Um, I forget what he's, what the, uh, I don't know even if it's a him or a her. Um, oh, I was trying to get, oh, I thought it said what that was. Oh, darn it. Anyway, TGG. Uh, so gave us a little support there uh, the other day on the Fountain uh, ep, Fountain app. And I want to mention uh, TGG for that as well. Don't forget your promo code PODCAST5 for your direct book for 5% off. If you're traveling two or three West Virginia on Interstates 6477, the West Virginia Turnpike, look us up. Go to RobinHolstein.com and look for Holstein House on the menu and uh, check into that. And I'm going to call it there. And I appreciate you. 
for um, stopping by. And I hope to see you again on Friday. As far as I know right now, Friday's going to be live and unscripted. Bye. So there you have it. Post your comments, do all that boosting, liking, sharing, thumbs up, and stuff that helps spread the word and poke the algorithms. Follow me on most of the big social media platforms and look for my name, Robin Holstein, or Holstein House. Till next time, bye-bye.